Warriors 3D. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at my K40 laser cutter. I'll give you a rough overview of the upgrades I've done, what we're going to do in the future. And yeah, hope you enjoy and find it useful. The first thing you're going to want if you're going to cut materials on your machine will be an air assist nozzle. This is my setup here and it's the one that I purchased when I first got the machine. It consists of a small 3D printed bracket, a steel tube, uh, a little nozzle at the end and some way of pumping air through the system. You want a decent amount of pressure and essentially this is going to get rid of all the dust and particles in your material that you're cutting and it will also help reduce flames and heat uh, which is pretty much essential otherwise you're going to risk having a fire basically. So that's the first modification I did and probably one of the most important. The second upgrade I did and this was to kind of improve the power output of the machine and basically use the power available more efficiently was to upgrade the three mirrors and the lens. So you've got a lens in here which basically focuses the laser onto a point on your work surface. You've then got a mirror here, a mirror here and a mirror in here as well. And then the laser tube is along the back. So basically you're firing the laser down, reflecting off that mirror to that mirror to that mirror and then down into your work surface through the lens. So the standard lens and mirrors that comes, come with these machines are really cheap. They don't reflect the laser that well. Um, so definitely noticed a big improvement when I upgraded. You can see here, uh, excuse the fingerprint there, um, but you can see that that's really quite reflective um, and this is just a massive improvement. And the other big thing you need to bear in mind is you need to clean these very regularly as well because as you burn materials <clears throat> the smoke residue from the material actually kind of embeds itself on the on the mirrors and the lens so by keeping them clean you're going to get a more powerful cut through your machine. Uh, so I got these ones from Cloudray, they're not hugely expensive, I think it was probably about £30 for the set uh, and I'll stick the, the link in the description below. The next upgrade on my laser cutter was the introduction of this kind of mesh bed along with a system to raise and lower the, the bed as well to, to compensate for different material thicknesses. Obviously if you imagine from the, the lens here to your work surface, depending on the thickness of the material this can change and that is a fixed focal height certainly on this system. So in order to compensate for different materials you need to raise and lower the bed. Now I've used a 3D printed system here. Um, along with some kind of aluminium uh, channel as well. But basically I can go in here and I can raise and lower the bed uh, to, to cope with different materials. The introduction of the mesh bed has really helped with uh, the reduction in burn marks. Which if I get an example here you can see on the bottom of this button that I've cut here uh, you can see there's kind of scorching and ash marks and even that's not ideal but without having this mesh bed, if this was just a solid piece of aluminium, that would be 10 times worse. And what I've actually started doing now is putting masking tape on the top and bottom of my material just to reduce the burn marks, which then reduces the time in post-processing to get the material looking nice. Now I'm going to show you in a minute, <laughs> the biggest upgrade that I've probably made is the new laser tube. <laughs> and there's a funny story behind that, which I'll tell you in a second as well. But basically, in order to use this bigger uh, laser tube, I also had to improve and upgrade the power supply. So this is a true 50 watt. Uh, you can see the model number there. Um, I mean, it does come from China, but it's a 50 watt power supply, which then feeds the laser. And you really don't want these to be maxed out. Uh, you want to have a little bit of headroom as well, just so they're not running 100% all the time. So that, that was an essential upgrade for the laser tube, which I'll show you now. At the same time as upgrading the laser tube, I kind of took it upon myself to upgrade the control board, which you can see here. This is the board that basically connects everything in the machine, goes through this board, which then connects to the computer and the software. So when you want to run a, a program, a cutting program, your computer will process it through this board and the board will transition it into the movement of your axes and the laser as well. Now the big improvement with this board over the stock board, now the stock board is called an M2 Nano on these machines. Uh, 
this is a mini gerbil, uh, mini gerbil, however you pronounce it, board, which is not hugely expensive. Um, it comes pre sort of programmed for this machine. Uh, you just have to obviously wire it in and mount it in the, in its inside this casing. But the big improvements for this is essentially allows you to use a much better software called Lightburn, which is really the industry leading laser cutting software uh, on the computer. Now that you do have to pay for, um, whereas on the standard control board, you can use a piece of software which is free called K40 Whisperer. I mean, that's a great piece of software, but in a later video, I'll show you how much more improved Lightburn is with all the extra kind of functionality. Something that is sort of invaluable through using this board and also the software is that you actually get PWM control. So your software can control a power function of the laser. So traditionally, I would have to control the laser output on the machine itself, which I'll show you in a second. I'll put a clip in now. So for every different kind of material, every different kind of cut, if I was going from engraving to cutting, would require me to go onto the machine and change the setting. And then I'd have to write down the settings suitable for each machine, eh, for each material, sorry. So if you wanted to engrave on wood, I would have a separate setting. If I wanted to cut the wood, I would have a different setting. With this board, I can do all that on the software, which then means I can pre-save all the settings. So if I'm cutting something out, like a, a keyring out of wood, I can have a layer of lines which will be at a setting to cut the material. And then if I want to engrave that keyring, there'll be another layer with a different colored line, which will then engrave. And the software will automatically program that I just have to hit go and then it will complete it itself and it will control the power of the laser without me having to do anything which is so, so, so handy. And once you've used that, it would be impossible to go back in my opinion. So you can see here with the machine powered up, this is how I would traditionally control the power uh, without doing it on the software. So you'd have to go in here, currently that's 99.9% .9 laser power. And you'd have to go in and manually set the power. And not only that, but these buttons don't function that well. So it used to be a total pain in the neck. So now I can just leave that. And as I say, on the on the computer over here, I can control all my settings for power on there, and then the machine just does it itself, which is just so much so much handier. This is the coolant that I use in my machine. Uh, basically, it's distilled water with uh, vehicle antifreeze in it. And the reason that I have antifreeze in it is I live in Scotland, and it gets pretty damn cold here in the winter time. And um, I've actually had my laser tube crack before from freezing. So I didn't have enough antifreeze in before. We had a day that was maybe minus 10 and basically the coolant froze in the laser tube. And then when I turned it on, it cracked and it basically flooded the machine. So that was an expensive lesson to, to learn. So yeah, now I use uh, vehicle coolant, distilled water, and I've had absolutely no problems at all. Um, I also have this little thermometer here, which gives me a rough, rough idea. I wouldn't say it's that accurate of the temperature of this. So this is the back of my laser cutter. And here you can see obviously the air assist tube here. Uh, this is just an, a separator, air water separator, which actually I don't need anymore. I used this when I used my other compressor, which is over there. Um, so actually the plan is to get rid of that just because it's a bit of a hassle. Um, but essentially I upgraded to this compressor, which is a Halia ACO328 compressor. Um, I think it was about 40 pounds, 30 to 40 pounds. And it's just infinitely quieter than that machine. It can run all the time, 24 seven, when you're cutting. So you don't need to worry about turning it on and off. Um, and I'll let you hear it just now. It's, it's super quiet. So I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but that's it actually running. Um, just so quiet, so much more pleasant on the ears. You don't need to wear ear defenders. You don't have this big compressor back here firing up all the time and it's really low maintenance you know you don't need to change oil or anything like that so yeah really worthwhile investment if you're going to run a laser car so here's the laser tube so this is essentially what gives you the laser and um, this is a co2 tube you can see here if you can read that it's a 50 watt tube and um, basically the way that the only way you can really get more power out of these is to go longer and get a physically bigger tube 
So you can imagine with this ma- this machine is sold as a 50 watt laser cutter. This is a 50 watt tube, but the original tube that was in it went from here to basically here. And this was flat, this was cut off. So the my t- original tube was only that length. So there's no way this was a 50 watt laser originally. You can see here I've made some 3D printed brackets that allow adjustment of the tube up and down, front to back, um, to basically when you align all the lasers, this is your final adjustment point here, uh, which basically raises and lowers the um, the point that the laser hits the last mirror. So that's been really handy. That's a lot nicer. The actual tube itself obviously giving me a lot more power. Um, as I can show you, you know, this is a six mil uh, birch board and it cuts that absolutely no problem, not on full power. And you also get these really nice clean cuts if that would focus. Yeah, you can see that. That's no cleaning up at all. That's just straight out of the machine. So yeah, really happy with that. That's opened up a lot more possibilities. You can see I've had to 3D print this extension tube, which obviously just protects the tube, protects me as well. Um, there's a file for that online, <coughs> which I can send anyone if they need it. Um, and here is the the first mirror that I was talking about earlier, um, which is upgraded as well. So yeah, here's your coolant tubes, which run down into the coolant uh, tank down there. So yeah, as I mentioned previously, I basically was forced to upgrade this tube because my coolant froze last time. You can imagine this has got coolant in it just now. That basically froze, shattered the tube. I, I switched it on. The coolant pumped out the tube through the cracks down and wrecked the power supply. So it just totally wrote off the machine. And in all honesty, I thought about just binning the machine because it wasn't really worth doing it. But I had someone wanting some stuff cut and I kind of used that as justification to just go back and basically go full hog with it. So, yeah, that's, that's the machine as it is just now. Uh, things I would like to do in the future you can see this is an absolute mess this is your uh, extraction system which basically extracts all the smoke and the fumes out of the machine and in theory should take it outside away from me so that needs to be revised I think what I'll do is probably 3D print a bracket here which will take have a 90 degree fitting that will come out and then this can go on there there's also a fan in behind here, and that's your extraction fan. But on proper extraction systems, you should really have the fan at the end exit point. So I will upgrade the bigger fan, bigger extractor fan, which will be placed at the end. And I think what I'm going to do, if you can see up there, is cut one of these squares out and have the actual extraction vent in there so I don't have to have the garage door open all the time. Because um, that's kind of annoying having to do that. Uh, other upgrades I would like to do, which I'll just show you in the front now. So in the front here, I th we mentioned in our introduction video, but I've put in these little 12 volt fans uh, just out of a computer case, which you can see here. They're not wired up at the moment. So basically what I need to do is wire them together, connect them to a 12 volt power supply, and essentially this will draw air in across the workpiece and then that'll be extracted out here. So you've got a constant flow of air across your workpiece. That should help reduce smoke in here. It kind of creates a positive pressure, which then allows the extraction to be a lot more efficient. It also should keep the smoke off the surface of the material. So as I was mentioning earlier, you obviously get this kind of staining on the, on the material. That constant flow of air should help reduce that because the, the smoke's not kind of stagnating on the workpiece. So that needs to happen. Obviously, I've started that. Uh, other upgrades I would like to do, I mean, maybe upgrade this kind of uh, laser head um, to incorporate a better kind of air assist system. And then really the next biggest up upgrade would be to have a much bigger cutting area. So. That would involve ripping out pretty much everything in here, relocating all the electrical stuff into a separate box on the side, cutting away this entire panel, and basically opening up the whole interior here to uh, accommodate cutting surface. Because really, I mean, on this machine, all you can realistically cut is pretty much an A4 sheet of paper, maybe slightly bigger, before you start running into issues with it kind of maxing out on one of the axes. 
But I mean, that is a lot further down the line and in theory, I don't really need that right now. So we'll see how, how much the machine gets used over the next 12 months. If I'm finding I'm using it a lot and I need that bigger space, then that'll be an upgrade that I do in the future. Well, thank you guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed or find this video useful. Um, there'll be plenty more to come. Hopefully we can start rolling these out on a regular basis. Obviously I've showed you my laser cutter here. The intention is I will have a video on the 3D printer. We've got an upgrade for that coming in soon. I'll give you a rough overview of that. What else have we got? Thinking what I might do as well is show you my kind of laser cutting workflow. So we'll go from a design, put it through the program on the computer, show you how that translates onto the machine, and then how we can finish a product as well. So hopefully that'll be useful and we can get that filmed maybe in the next couple of weeks. But I'll get something out in the meantime and uh, yeah, in the meantime, if you could like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever all the YouTubers say, that'd be brilliant. Cheers, guys.